30 million people in the U.S. have a rare disease, 350 million people worldwide. That's more than all cancers and AIDS combined. I met her at a small little place in uh, Carmel Mountain, San Diego. And it was a pretty quick, you know, connection and I ended up getting pregnant and <laughs> we got married when I was eight months pregnant. Then two months later we had beautiful Callie. Every time she would smile, she would just start shaking. It was nonstop, and we, we felt like we couldn't get her out of it. We did decide at that point to um, call 911, admit her to Mission Hospital, and then run a battery test after that. Hooked up to every EEG you know, test you can possibly imagine. We ended up doing uh, CAT scans, we ended up doing MRI scans. Going to the hospital and finding, finding out nothing, it was tough. It was tough. So we had Raylan in 2006. She, you know, developed normally, hit her milestones perfectly. Everything was gravy. So we were like, okay, everything's cool, you know. We were convinced that it wasn't gene related and this wouldn't duplicate itself. 2009, we had Ryan. Doctors came in and said, look, she shares the same exact patterns, brain damage that, uh, that her older sister does. I can recall getting that news, walking downstairs, getting in my my, uh, my 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 truck or car and calling my dad and repeatedly saying the F word and banging my um, my steering wheel and that was what that's what I did that was my reaction and it took about two minutes so I did that got out of the car walked up to Christy and said, let's, let's do this. It was really hard to deal with. It was really hard. <sighs> I was working with another rare disease group that was working with this wonderful, wonderful PR specialist. Her name's Kim Sherman, and she learned more about what we were doing. She said, I have to put you in touch with the Spooners. We created what we called the Tribute to Champions of Hope Gala. As luck would have it, in the seats at this event, there was a geneticist. She had actually been one of their early geneticists. So when she saw that they still were undiagnosed and saw this, this family, she tried to get in touch with them. So I met the Spooners in August 2010, and um, Kaylin was around uh, 10 at the time. There were many, many tests that the girls had uh, been through. Unfortunately, the technology to sequence every gene potentially causing the girl's problems was not available until about a year or so ago when exomic sequencing was available commercially and we arranged for testing at uh, Amri Genetics. The first time I actually met them was uh, to give them the results of the exome testing that they'd order. So I was there, Dr. Kimonis was there, we had uh, one of the, a research coordinator, a, a pediatrics resident was there. I believe there were also two genetic counseling students there, so it was quite a Room. Next thing you know, we were called into a meeting and we have a diagnosis. 14 years of looking for this and it was just, here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, Carolyn Laurie and Christy Spooner. try not to cry. <laughs> um, first of all, thank you so much for having us here tonight. Um, I'm honored to share our story with you. As you can see from the clip of our beautiful documentary produced by the one and only Mike Squire of Ambry Genetics, <laughs> we have had a very long and crazy 14 years of searching for a diagnosis. For, um, we've been trying to search for answers for our oldest daughter, Callie, who is now 14, and Ryan, who is four. For 14 years, we have been giving vial after vial of our daughter's blood, taking part in every test possible, seeing every doctor possible, trying to find a, doc trying to find a diagnosis. Searching for a diagnosis is an endless, exhausting task. We knew nothing, our doctors were out of ideas, and we were struggling with the fact that we may never find a diagnosis. We felt helpless. One year ago, we attended the first annual Tribute of Champions to Hope, and we were sitting in this very audience without a diagnosis, no answers, and frankly, we had lost all hope. Now, here we are again with a completely different situation. 
we were, we were reconnected with our past geneticist, Dr. Virginia Camonis out of UCI, and she told us about a new cutting edge test called exome sequencing. She said our family was a perfect candidate for this test, and we of course jumped at the opportunity. We were ecstatic, we were excited, we, we had never heard of exome sequencing. And it's just, it was an amazing feeling to have this newfound hope again of that we might find an answer. Shortly thereafter, each of our families submitted blood. At the time, we didn't know about exome sequencing. Our blood samples were sent to Ambry Genetics, and the sequencing began. With great pleasure and gratitude, we are happy to announce we found a diagnosis through exome sequencing. As a result of this test, our girls, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. As a result of this test, our girls are now categorized as rare diagnosed as opposed to rare undiagnosed. Our huge question mark after all these years has been replaced with a name. The results of the exome sequencing show that Callie and Ryan both have complex one deficiency, a very rare type of mitochondrial disease. So rare in fact, there are only two other published people in the world with this known rare disease. We now know what is going on, we know which direction to look. Even though it's a very rare disease, knowing what it is creates so many more opportunities for research and knowledge. We once had a doctor tell us that it's more common to win the lottery twice than it is to meet someone with the same recessive gene. Well, my husband and I, Rick, both share the same recessive gene, <laughs> and um, each of our children has a 25% chance of inheriting this mutated gene. This would explain why our middle daughter, Raylan, who is seven, did not, uh, she did, she's unaffected. The great news is, is there's treatment available. Callie and Ryan both take a cocktail of vitamins three times per day, what they call the mitochondrial cocktail, and we also focus more on clean eating and lots of exercise and therapies. And who knows, someday there may even be a cure. We now have hope that one day, Callie and Ryan will have a better quality of life and ultimately independence. We have had the pleasure to work closely with Nicole Boych of Global Genes Rare Project. Global Genes is an amazing organization that works tirelessly to make connections with families like ours to help find answers. Global Genes, Dr. Virginia Camonis and Dr. Elizabeth Chow of UCI, Ambry Genetics, and Kim Sherman of Echo Media Group, have all gone above and beyond to find answers for us, for our Spooner family. Raising awareness and helping other families is imperative. Exome sequencing is critically important for other families to have the same opportunity. We have to keep the momentum going. We were fortunate that exome sequencing was covered by our insurance, but some other families are not so lucky. It is even more disheartening and frustrating to know this test is available, but there are families that don't have the money or the coverage for this test. Having answers and finding a diagnosis is the most important first step for discovery and treatment and possible cures. We are so grateful. All we want is to extend this opportunity to other families so they can find answers too. Hope is more than ever within our reach. Hope is definitely in our genes and sequencing can make that hope a reality. All of us here tonight understand the struggles of our disease. All of us here are here for a reason. We can do something about it, and together, as Josh said, together we can make a difference. So thank you for having us. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. And I'm sure to most people, the Spooner's story sounds very surprising in this day and age with uh, science where it is to know that you can have a child that's so sick or has severe disabilities, and yet you have no idea what the cause is. But uh, like rare disease itself, the Spooner story really is not that rare. As is the case with the Spooners, our family does not have a diagnosis for the rare disease affecting our eight-year-old son, James, who's, who's here with me tonight. Since the day James was born and began having seizures and spent time in the intensive care unit and the months that followed when we found out that he had severe disabilities. We've been searching for a cure to what might be the cause. James has undergone literally hundreds of tests. He's seen regularly at UCSF and at Stanford. His case has been reviewed at Harvard and Johns Hopkins. We had the, the rare opportunity to participate in the government's undiagnosed diseases program at the NIH. Still, we have no answers for why our beautiful boy has seizures, he can't understand anything we say to him, and he can't talk. 
Ironically, uh, my husband Greg and I, who's here, we're both in biotech executives. We both work with scientists and investors who are experts in finding treatments for patients. We live near some of the greatest research institutions in the, in the Northern California area. We have access to great health care. However, we're like it's searching for a needle in a haystack. And we're, most of the experts we see have never seen a case like this before. And despite all of this, we still have hope. And that hope comes from two sources. First, the technology that's being applied to diagnosing and treating rare diseases is making huge leaps every day. Every year, these advances in the understanding of the genetic basis for disease and the ability, the, the ability to map the genome have led to the diagnosis and understanding of numerous rare diseases that wasn't previously possible. James and our family's genomes are being studied by the team at the Translational Genomics Institute, Center for Rare Childhood Disease Disorders, and we hope that that technology can provide some of the answers in our quest for a diagnosis and just maybe the first step in our path towards a possible treatment. But hope doesn't just come from that kind of technology. It also comes from people. And since the founding of the Global Genes Rare Project, only a few years ago, Nicole Boyce has been tireless in her work to unite our community, support and generate opportunities to share information and make connections, and give rare disease a voice that's only possible when we're all united together. The connections made through Global Genes led the Spooners to a diagnosis. It was through the Global Genes organization that we learned of the genome sequencing opportunity at TGen. And as a board member of Global Genes Rare Project, I've had the chance to learn from so many others that are successfully navigating down this winding path. What we'd like to accomplish tonight is to fund this kind of hope for so many families, as many as possible. As you heard in the Spooners video, there are literally millions of people suffering from rare disease. And most of them don't have the kind of access that our families have had. They depend on the work being done at the Global Genes Project to guide them on their journey and to help provide access to this technology. We'd like to call on everyone present here tonight to help with our goal of raising $200,000 at tonight's gala so that no one with a rare disease is left without hope. Finally, before turning back to Tim, our host, I want to offer my most sincere thanks to Nicole and to everyone at the, on the Global Genes team. But importantly, I want to thank my little buddy James. Having James in my life has allowed me to experience the joy that he sees in everything around him and the kindness and compassion of strangers that we run into as we go along this path. So thank you, everyone, for coming tonight, and we really appreciate your support.